In 2023, there exists 300 programming languages. There's Python, JavaScript, Java without the script. But if we go back 75 years in the past, there was just a handful of coders and just one programming language. In 1947, Kathleen Booth created the first ever programming language at the University of London. She titled this invention Assembly Language, which was a huge step up from binary. Try to do anything in binary. It's impossible. Now, don't get me wrong. Assembly was and still is tremendously brutal brutal to code in. I actually took a university course in it, and it was just dreadful. Over the course of the next decade, various assembly languages were built and were taught to anyone learning computer science. There really wasn't coding without assembly. Okay, let's fly from London to America. And now it was 1957. In walks John Backus, a computer scientist and mathematician from Philadelphia. John was basically like, hey, assembly is good and all, but actually it really sucks to code in. It's so slow and so hard to learn. So what he did was invented Fortran which stood for formula translation. While Fortran is technically considered a general purpose language, meaning it's used for just about anything, it was especially well suited for mathematics, which was developed way more than our computer software was. Two years later and closely associated with Fortran, we have COBOL, common business language implemented by Grace Hopper and team. Corporate America had existed for many, many decades, and now we had Fortran for the math stuff and COBOL for the business stuff. Life was good. While both Fortran and COBOL are still kicking around today and are not considered too difficult languages to learn, there was still a lot of improvement to be made. John Kemeny and Thomas Kurtz in 1963 invented the basic language, easy to code in and it was general purpose, it could do so many different things. Thomas and John targeted basic at everybody. They wanted people, regardless of their discipline, to be able to code and they nailed it with basic. Keeping along with this trend of general purpose languages, in 1972 everything changed. Inside Bell Laboratories, Dennis Ritchie created created the programming language that forever changed the world. You guessed it, it was B. Okay, I'm just kidding, it was C, but it was called C because there was B and it was better than B, never mind. Not only did C immediately become the go-to programming language for just about everybody, it was also used by the same person to create Unix, probably the most important piece of software ever written. 50 years later, Unix is still being adapted as both Linux and Mac OS, that's right, all the Apple computers are Unix-based systems. If the rampage of the C programming language hasn't seen great enough somehow, guess what else it made? SQL. SQL stood for Structured Query Language. It enabled pretty much everyone as it was tremendously easy to use to manipulate, access, and store data in relational databases. It's just as popular today as it was 50 years ago. In fact, I'm actually a data scientist and the number one skill I'd recommend today is SQL. Oh, and another language that's coming up shortly, just wait for it. A decade goes by and C's onslaught was insane. You didn't need anything else. We had C for coding and we had SQL for databases. That's all you needed. However, as amazing as C was, it was also terrible. People today hate coding in it for a reason. One of those reasons is C strings. Yeah, actually, don't even get me started. There was many fundamental problems, and there was phenomenal work being done in the area of object-oriented programming, which made coding very, very fast. This is why in 1983, Bjarne Strusip invented C++. C++ was basically C on steroids. There was a ton of new libraries, a bunch of fixes to its problems, and it enabled this beautiful beautiful object-oriented design. While there's no massive problem with C and C++, people just don't like coding in it. So in the 1990s, there was an insane onslaught of new programming languages. The 90s gave us Visual Basic, which allowed a drag and drop design of the basic language. We got R, which made statistics and visualizations tremendously easy, like literally one-liners. We got Java, which is basically just a better C++. It's C++ without the pointers, and it's on billions of devices. We got PHP. HP, which soon dominated the back end of website creation, and most importantly, we got JavaScript, which has a long, ugly history, but it eventually, as we know, became the only language you would need for both front end and back end web development. Hence, PHP is kind of dead now. Okay, so I guess that must be the end of the video, since these are all the languages that people actually use today. Wait, 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 there's another? How could I have forgotten? Well, probably because this language was also built in the 90s, but no one paid any attention to it for over a decade. While most people think this language was created after most of the ones we just talked about, actually, it was before all of them. 
In 1991, Guido Van Rossum invented the first version of Python. Python had a slow kickoff. There was a lot of competition at this time, and people were paying attention to Java, still C++, and JavaScript. But over time, Python kept getting better and better, and it got so many more libraries with more and more people writing code for it. Over time, and fast forward to today, it is arguably the most popular and beloved programming language on the planet. I think the main thing holding Python back is the fact that it's general purpose, but it can't be used for many things. If we can't make a mobile app in a general purpose language, that's kind of a shame. Okay, so that's actually the end. Are you mad at me for not talking about C Sharp or Kotlin? Hopefully not. Are you mad at me for not talking about Objective-C or Swift? Well, I don't have an iPhone and I use a Windows computer, so don't sue me there either. Okay, but seriously, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider dropping a like and subscribing. I'm gonna be doing a lot more of this type of content, so definitely drop a sub if you did like it. Okay, bye guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.